Oh, my goodness. Well, happy Wednesday morning, friends. It's hump day. I hope you're getting over the hump. I hope you're doing the humpty dance. Whatever it is you do on hump day, I hope you're getting it in. Man, I don't know about you, but man, it has been so much fun. Sitting we here. sitting here. I supposed to be the franchise player, and we're in here talking about practice. We've been talking about practice. I mean, it, listen, we're yes, talking we about are. practice. Practice. Not a game. Not, Not a game. game. Not a game. Not We've a been game. talking about practice. We're talking about practice. Oh, my goodness. Not a game. Not a game. Not a- not until next Sunday. We, my friends, are knee deep into the beginning of the NFL season. And I don't know about you, I am happy. I am excited. We, of course, had the one negative, of course, being Sam Williams going down and being lost for the season. But we had, of course, yesterday, Diggs being activated off the pup list. Oh, man. If he is ready to go, if he is ready to go, oh my goodness. All right, so you, I, I want to understand, I want you to understand something. There's the Dallas Cowboys life cycle, okay? We lose in the playoffs, we get trashed, the Cowboys suck, and, you know, they're the worst team, worst run franchise in the NFL. They're garbage, their quarterback sucks, their players are overrated, and they're bums, Right? Then we get to free agency. Then we get all the hype on all the teams, of course. You know, last year, it was the Jets. The Jets, oh my God. You know, Aaron Rodgers there with the Jets. It's great. Well, pump the brakes a little bit on that. We'll see. Because it seems like every year the Jets do a whole lot a lot in the offseason, and they talk about them being scared. Remember a couple of years back when Russell Wilson went to the Denver Broncos, and they were talking about how, With Derek Carr, with the Raiders, with Justin Herbert, with the Chargers, with um, Russell Wilson, of course, with Denver, and with uh, Pat Mahomes, of course, with Kansas City, that that was the best, that was the best division in football. It was going to be crazy. Yeah. So, then the Cowboys get trashed for not doing anything in free agency. And then the draft, it'll be, oh, well, they should have taken this guy or they should have taken that guy. You know, they they get a C plus or maybe a B minus in the draft and things. And then, of course, they get trashed and everything else. But lo and behold, by training camp, what happens to us Cowboy fans, or at least some of us, um, and the talking heads is, miraculously, now there are Super Bowl aspirations. That hasn't completely happened just yet, but it's coming. It's coming where they're going to say, oh, well, the Cowboys, you know, it, nothing less than a Super Bowl, expectation-wise, that's created by them. And I don't want to be that guy, and I'm not trying to say anything about a Super Bowl, but as much as the Cowboys have been trashed, and as much as we go through this life cycle, we found out before that we've let players go and we have other guys that step up that people don't know about or weren't expecting to be able to step up. You understand what I'm saying? Because you could look back and say Amari Cooper, Cedric Wilson, Lyle Collins, uh, Connor Williams, Randy Gregory. You know, is, is that worse or the same as losing Dante Fowler and Dorrance Armstrong and Hankins and uh, Stefan Gilmore? Every year we lose a bunch of players that we they say they don't replace. Oh, I'm sorry, and Tyron Smith. At the moment, here's where there's hope. There's hope because when you control the middle of the field, shout out to DMV, you control the field. And right now, the Cowboys potentially could have a better offensive line letting go Biotish and Tyron Smith. I know it's just one padded practice, okay? It's just one padded practice and we got a long way to go and I don't know that Micah Parsons was going 100% and letting it rip out there or anything like that. But he doesn't look like Chaz Green. Tyler Guyton for a guy who is six foot seven, which generally when guys are that tall it's harder to move. They move kind of like Frankenstein. Uh, uh, okay. We could call him Twinkle Toast. 
Twinkle Toes Tyler. The way his feet moved, da, 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 da. I mean, it, it was like Fred Flintstone bowling. You know, okay, Twinkle Toes. He's got great footwork and is moving well. And when he engages, it seems like he's engaging. He looks a lot better than what was advertised. He looks like what the Giants thought they were going to get with Evan Neal. Brock Hoffman is looking pretty good at center. There's no step down from losing Biotish. And then you got Cooper Beebe who's working on his um, snaps, his shotgun snaps. And if it ends up being that Brock Hoffman is the starter... And you got Cooper Beebe, who has played guard last year and is working on center, that he's your backup. Whoa. That, 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 all of a sudden, you got some depth. You got a guard center right there. You also have Chimo Igoda, who is a better guard than tackle as a backup. And it seems like. Because here's what's good is you're not hearing anything negative. When you don't hear about a guy, that's good on the the line. Okay? So when you hear their name, you start to worry. Or they're outstanding. But now you got Terrence Steele seeming to be a year removed from the recovery on the ACL moving better. That's an improvement. So you could definitely say an improvement at right tackle. Possibly an improvement at center. You know, Tyler Guyton is just going into his third year. And Zach Martin is Zach Martin. And then, maybe you don't have much of a drop-off from Tyron Smith. Or possibly, maybe you get a guy who will make some mistakes. But is able to really do some things. And if you can get this offensive line together, if they can play and be a top-five offensive line, that definitely helps your running game because, you know, between Rico and Zeke, if you've got an offensive line that's opening up some holes, you're going to make some yardage there. And if you've got an offensive line that can give Dak Prescott some time, any quarterback out there, if you give him five seconds, is going to find an open man. So there's reason to be optimistic optimistic about the Dallas Cowboys offense right now the defense um, we'll see getting digs back will be definitely helpful Overshone is work is moving well in practice um, Eric Kendricks is doing well and he's mentoring the other guys um, Mozzie is looking really you know is definitely night and day better than what he had been and you should feel good at least with what we have. Now, the Cowboys have the Dallas Cowboys organization have a problem. And talking to my brother from another mother, Law Nation, he said that, you know, the the weekend, there were a lot of people there on the weekend, but it was almost like a ghost town yesterday. There'll be people, I'm sure, on the weekend because that's, of course, the weekend. But the people who come during the week, here's the thing. The people that come during the week are usually people that are coming like an idiot like me that are spending more money to say, I'm going to Dallas Cowboys training camp. And there seems to be a lack of enthusiasm for training camp, not only here, but with the Cowboys in general. I think a lot of people have gotten Dallas Cowboys fatigue, that they're sick and tired of Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones always talking and telling you we're all in and then doubling down. Well, we're still all in. And and, and at some points you're just like enough is enough. Okay. Enough is enough, Jerry. We want to see something actually done. We want to see you really try and get the team better. The thing that's maddening about the Cowboys is as I look at the team right now, you have so many good things that you've done. You've got a great quarterback. You've got, you know, one of the best wide receivers out there. You've got an up-and-coming tight end star. You've done great things with the offensive line. And it's just like 
If you just went that extra 5% to make sure we have extra depth or we have an extra standout player that can help on the defensive front, you know, with the run stopping and things and the pass rushing, it's not like there's a lot that needs to be added to make the Dallas Cowboys a juggernaut. And that's the frustration that you get because you can compete with the, the Washingtons and the Giants and the Eagles and things. But by the end of the season, because you're relying on so few guys, it gets to be really, really tough in the playoffs. And that's where you, you start having a Zeke Elliott with a hyperextended knee or a Tyron Smith who's barely hanging on, you know, because he's been battered and bruised and the back is acting up, the elbow and the knee um, in there. And that's your defense, that you don't have enough guys to stop the run, enough big, big bodies. Or you don't have any linebackers. That's the maddening thing about it is the Cowboys are closer to being on the top than they are being in the bottom. And for people to turn around and say, just rip it up and start all over. Now you got to get 53 guys as opposed to three or four. That's the madness that is. Funny thing, yesterday, Dan Orlowski. Dan Orlowski, oh my God, this this is ridiculous. Listen to this. I would right now, if you asked me to rank the NFC quarterbacks, it's Matthew Stafford one. I would probably put Jordan Love at two and Brock Purdy at three. But if you flip flop those guys for me, I would have no argument on that. I'd probably put Kirk Cousins at four and Jared Goff at five. So Love is on his way. The nine game stretch, he was one of the best quarterbacks in all of football. But I'm, Stafford Dan, is still at the What the hell is Dak Prescott, Dan? What, what, yeah, I was what, about to say, I mean, I, did, I didn't. Did you purposely leave out Dak? Did you just overlook Dak Prescott? I mean, who are you putting Dak over? You're going to put him over Jared Goff? You, you tell all me. Them? You, you, so, you, would, you would take, I mean, go, Harry. Did he just say all of them? You, you, does Dak, I mean, Dak, the, wasn't the he runner-up for MVP the last MVP year? He of the league at one point last year. Yeah. He had a great season. Like, I would right now, if you asked me to rank the NFC. Th that's. I'm sorry. I don't know what, what, what Dan Orlowski's, Dan, your lousy, has against Dak Prescott. Seriously. You know, this is a case where I can sum it up perfectly. Those who can do. Those who can talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? No, you just want to sit on the sideline and talk about other people. Or can you step up? Literally, literally, are you just going to sit on the sidelines or are you going to step up? Um, yeah, Dan Orlowski, I don't know what the deal is with him and uh, the, the, the total disrespect of Dak Prescott and things. You know, here's the thing that's funny is they talk about winning, that winning is the only thing that matters. Forget the stats, right? And we constantly hear Dak Prescott and Kirk Cousins are the same guy and stuff. Or like Dan Orlowski right there basically saying that Kirk Cousins is rated higher than Dak Prescott. Well, here's the thing. Dak Prescott head-to-head -head going against Kirk Cousins. Five and one. Five and one. So if it's about wins, how is it that Kirk Cousins is better? Just just asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. All right, as we get ready to get out of here, here's the big question of the day. Will the Dallas Cowboys miss the playoffs? Now, I've got, of course, Dan Salio, and I'm questioning myself. The Dan Salio show where I get tag-teamed by him and Philly 500, and the fans in there say some of the dirtiest, nastiest shit to me. You would think I was anything but a child of God. Not sure exactly why I go on there for that abuse. He believes that the Cowboys are a five-win team this year. Only five. Okay, I think he only thinks the Eagles are going to be a seven. So my question then is, do you think that the Giants are going to win the division or Washington is going to win the division? Or you think that everybody is going to be that awful in the division that 
seven wins will win it. Interesting, to say the least. Let's listen in on this one, and uh, you tell me what y'all think. Oh, wrong one. I got too many damn buttons here. Touchdown! You wouldn't want it any other way. Hmm. Stal, may have you heard this before. Dak Prescott still doesn't have a new long-term deal after Dak in one of the best regular seasons amongst quarterbacks, but disappointed in the... Uh-oh. The playoffs when Jordan Love and the Packers ended their season early on their home turf. Jordan just got paid. Along with Dak, Micah Parsons, CeeDee Lamb also looking for new contracts. Here's S.A. with a hot take on Dakota. This is the reaction we talk about. You talk about Micah Parsons, yeah, yeah. You talk about CeeDee Lamb, yeah, yeah, that brother, yeah, yeah. You talk about Dak Prescott, uh, 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 uh. I, 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 I believe I, I, he he gonna be I he he gonna be I. That's what you do. That's what you do. Everybody else, yeah. Let's go, Dak. Uh, uh, yeah. he, he, nah, man, I ain't gonna let you talk about my man Dak like that, man. He, he, he gonna be okay. Stephen A. being wow. Stephen A. Uh, Damien, where do you rank Dallas in the NFC? Marley, I would say at, at, their, at their highest fourth. Like, this is a lesser team than last year. You know, when you look at it, they, they got to replace a couple pieces on the offensive line. Who's the running back? They don't have a number two wide receiver. Like, defensively, I don't think they're going to be as good as they were last year. So when I look at the sum of all the parts with the Dallas Cowboys, the highest that I can put the Dallas Cowboys is fourth. And that might be doing, that might be giving them a, a little a, wow. a favor. Because I don't think, that, I think this is a much lesser team than the teams we've seen go 12 and, you know, winning 12 games, I think three consecutive seasons. Nick? <laughs> Yeah, they've gone, they've won 12 and 5 the last three consecutive seasons, which is nothing to sneeze at. I think Damien's right. They are a lesser team than they've been. That doesn't mean that they can't have uh, as much or more success because we saw last year. I, I think we didn't anticipate Dak having the type of season that he ended up having. But the talent isn't gone from, from uh, the Cowboys roster. They've weakened on the offensive line. I think it's the biggest concern, but mm -hmm. they're still getting digs back. They still have in Lawrence and uh, they still have Lawrence as an incredible pass rusher and Micah Parsons as another incredible pass rusher. They still have the pieces to be one of the better teams in the NFC, but I do think they've taken a step back talents-wise. I would be less generous, but not by much. I think they're fifth or sixth best team in the NFC, but I do think that uh, depending on how they respond to the answers mm -hmm. that were presented in the playoff game to their offensive system. I think that was the biggest problem with the Cowboys was they didn't change things. They were kind of, we do what we do and it works. And then when they got to a team that was game planning for the things that they were doing, they didn't have another They didn't have answer. a linebacker. You want to blame that on the coaches or on Dak We didn't have I'm linebackers, sure guys. I know who Stephen A is going to blame it on because clearly it's going to be on Dak Prescott. But that seemed to be the issue for them offensively in the playoff game. Their defense was atrocious and in an Offensively, it seemed like the the uh, Packers knew exactly what they're going to do, and the Cowboys didn't have an answer for it. So I have them eighth and out of the playoffs. I think San Francisco's better. I think Philly's better. I think Detroit is better. I think Green Bay is better. I think the Rams are better. I think Seattle's better. And I think someone from the South is obviously going to get better. Somebody, anybody, anybody from the from somebody's the got to be just as good. If Give not me better. a fat baby boy. Uh, Okay, look at we the have look. question marks at left the tackle, center, right tackle, tailback, receiver outside of CeeDee Lamb. Def okay, so it seems like we're, we're getting some answers on the left tackle situation. And it seems like we've got an answer at center as well. And um, let's go on. Let's go on with Dan. Let, 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 let the hate, hate and continue. Defensive tackle, inside linebacker, and Neek. Uh, you oh, and Maz is looking better than I. Than I know Hank Trayvon's right coming back, but I don't know what he's going to be like coming off of an ACL. Like, is he going to be that same guy? Off the pup list. Is it similar to like it takes a full season? I, I have no idea about that, but I do. Uh, to expect him to just come back and be who he was I, I, is 
rich, I guess. So uh, I think this team's got a lot of questions. I think it's one of the most competitive training camps what that we have in the NFL because they have, have so many questions. roster spots up that they have to try to replace. I know some of their rookie draft picks, their fingers crossed. Hopefully those guys step in. But this is a football team that I have a lot of unknowns and question marks attached to more than I know them. I know Dak's going to play well. I know CD. I know Dak's going to play gonna well, CD. but I, I don't think he's a good an quarterback. absolute superstar. But other than that, like, right. I don't know but a lot about this football team. I think you don't know a lot about I anything. I don't disagree with you, but then a, a bunch of those other teams that you mentioned, they're big question marks with them too. Thank they you. They haven't had the track record that the Cowboys have had of success. And some of those teams that you mentioned, the question mark is at the quarterback spot. Looking like a you're puppy. You're talking about somebody's going to come out of the South and you're throwing uh, the the Seahawks in there where the Seahawks' defense got worse. And we all know <laughs> McDon- McDonald's um, defense took a year for it to settle in with the Ravens. I don't think the Seahawks are better. I think that you have to show some respect. I know the Cowboys are annoying. I know we talk about them too much. But we do have to show some respect for the fact that they've been one of the best teams in football. Even though they may collapse in the playoffs uh, year after year, they won 12 games three years in a row. And they haven't changed a couple of the major, most important pieces. They still have their best player on defense, healthy and ready to go in Micah Parsons. They still have one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL in Dak Prescott. I'm assuming CeeDee Lamb's going to figure it out and find his way onto the field. He's still one of the best receivers in football. Like, I think we owe them that. You're out here talking about these teams that are unproven at important positions and assuming that they don't have question marks. They have question marks, too. The where Cowboys are some of the teams that I mentioned marks, unproven? they have a lot of answers that these other teams don't have. Where, where, where are some, are some of these teams I mentioned unproven? Certainly not a quarterback. Like, neither of those teams that I mentioned out of the NFC South are unproven at quarterback. We know who Kirk Cousins, Cousins is. Kirk Cousins is a good on, quarterback. Hold on, <laughs> Trayvon, Trayvon Diggs uh, coming back from an ACL is a question mark. Okay, a but Kirk it's Cousins position. from a- <laughs> But Kirk really? Cousins? Like, I, as a quarterback who's just a pocket guy, come back from an Ach- oh, Achilles a little bit point. smoother? The Falcons, oh. that's fine. The Falcons oh. are an unproven entity. We have not seen the, the Falcons put it all together in, consistently in the way that we've seen the Cowboys do it consistently. This is just mad. So they dude. are a new coach, a new quarterback, two new quarterbacks. Just assuming that they're going to leapfrog them, to me, is, to use your word, ludicrous. A little bit but, Don, but that's the why I said someone from the South. I, someone, I, 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 then, then I'll take Tampa. There's not a ton of new. Gonna the, the, it's going to be the Panthers? No, I said Tampa. Bucks. Yeah, and I, so I don't believe in Baker Mayfield the way that you do. I think Ooh. that he had a good season last year, but he lost the reason why he had a good Baker. season. We I'm all sorry. gave the credit. Dan to Canales. Canales Dan is, is like, just the villain. You're saying as if the I agree. The Cowboys have question marks. I wouldn't bet any of Every my hard earned money on them. Every team has But you are naming a bunch of other teams that also have question marks. The one team that we're talking about in this group of teams with question marks that has proven success year after year is the Dallas Cowboys. Have they earned no benefit of the doubt? That to me is is shocking. You're giving the benefit of the doubt to all these other teams who have question marks and not the Cowboys, the one team that's gone 12 and 5 the last three years in a row. I'm going to leave it right there because this is getting to be ridiculous. Here's the thing that's funny is because there's always the assumptions that once a guy has a great season, that they're always going to have a great season. See, everybody thinks that it's preordained that Jordan Love is going to play like he did the last nine games of the season, and that's going to be the way he is for the rest of his career. People assume that Justin Herbert, after his um, sophomore season, that that was going to be the Justin Herbert that you were going to see. 38 TDs or 37 TDs and you know close to 5,000 yards. But the next two years, not so good. Everybody assumes Joe Burrow, you know, after having some really good time, now he's getting injured. And, of course, you can say, well, he was injured. Yeah, well, that's part of the equation. We all assume that automatically because a team did well last year that they're going to do well the following year. But the reality is, is half of those teams, half of those teams that were playoff teams last year won't be. There is a high attrition rate in the NFL. Just remember, Daniel Jones, this time last year, people were literally saying, I'll take Daniel Jones over Dak Prescott when he had his best season. I'm not going to say it was a good season, 
how many TD passes was it? They made the playoffs. They got a victory. And all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, the Giants. And, you know, Daniel Jones is the guy, and he got paid. And then what happened? They went off a cliff. The Seattle Seahawks, the year before, playoff team, played well. Last year, hung around about 500, missing the playoffs. So don't assume that what you saw last year with Jordan Love or any of these guys, including Dak Prescott, is going to be the norm. But the thing I will say is, for the Cowboys to have won 12 games three years in a row, to have won their division two out of three years, is insane. That doesn't happen. And as much as they say there's questions on the Cowboys, there's questions throughout the NFL. Questions throughout the NFL. But you actually have to look and say, regular season-wise, Cowboys have been more consistent than just about anybody else. Playoffs, well, that's a different horse right there. But to turn around and say that you, you got them as the eighth or ninth best team in the, in, in the NFL, sorry. Bro, that, that that ain't right. All right, good people. As always, I appreciate you guys. We're going to get out of here today. Uh, Dan Salio in about six hours. Damn. I got to deal with those mother humpers in six hours. We'll get caught up on what's going on with the Eagles. And, of course, I'll, I'll get trashed because that's what always happens. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace. Think Mark Holmes, the son of John Holmes has ever had Stephen Jones on four times on his show? Who in the world is Mark Holmes? Will somebody please tell me? My new way, King Dick back here. And so before we start this video, I gotta get this mother humping thing out of the way.